ladies and gentlemen boys and girls and welcome to yet another brand new video of my cricket dreams this is adit nair and in today's video we would be discussing about military news military infrastructure and uh, military capabilities you know last video we i told in my last video that from now on days i'm going to talk more about military news and military capabilities of each and every country all over the world and in the last video we talked about ins vikrant and how it can be a game changer and uh, for the indian navy and a massive boost for make in india initiative but in today's video we will be discussing about a different topic we will be discussing about the ongoing russia ukraine war the russia ukraine war has started on 24 february 2022 when vladimir putin russia's president said said that he initiated his so called military operation special military operation in ukraine since then there has been heavy bombardment heavy artillery fire and tens and thousands of civilians have been killed so far one of the worst war crimes were committed in bucha whereas vladimir whereas uh, us intelligence and uh, vladimir zelensky uh, ukraine's president has said that russian forces are killing and abusing several other people and civilians in ukraine as well so there has been a huge headache for world community we are looking at civilians un has expressed concerns a million times and according to their data according to their report more than 5000 civilians has been killed uh, in this war and according to some reports more than 10 million people has been fled to other neighboring countries which resulted in the worst and the largest refugee crisis since world war 2 and everyone knows that the battle of kiev war is over and the ukrainian forces against all the odds defeated the second most powerful country in the world Russia in the battle of Kyiv this was a massive blow to the prestige as well as the capabilities as well as the morality of the russian forces staged in ukraine whereas this was a massive boost for ukraine and this it was this momentum that the ukrainian forces carried on and defeated the russians in several small but key battles now the stage is set in eastern ukraine vladimir putin's so called military special military operation first objective was to liberate donetsk and luhansk regions give them independence so now the stage is set vladimir putin had two main objectives first objective was to get an overland territorial connection uh in its crimean region so russia needed an overland territorial connection which connected crimea so this is the reason why there has been a lot of hiccups lot of artillery bombardment in mariupol and kherson which is key in order to achieve this objective second objective is liberate donetsk and luhansk regions so the stage is set in eastern ukraine and the war the battle for donbas has already started almost one month before russia knows that if they manage to defeat the ukrainian forces annex or you know liberate donetsk and luhansk from ukraine then they can claim victory and end the military operation so this war is going to be crucial this battle of donbas is going to be very crucial because who wins this battle perhaps would even tell who wins the war as well but unfortunately for the russian forces they have not yet managed to find any breakthrough or not yet managed to break through the ukrainian lines In this video we would be discussing about why Russia failed in Donbas so far why Russia is not able to get a breakthrough in Donbas 
Almost after three weeks of fighting, the Ukrainian troops have held the line. Even after pounds of artillery bombardment, air bombardment, all the Ukrainian resistance has been strong. And this has frustrated the Russian troops. Russia's failure to uh, get a breakthrough also represents a noteworthy accomplishment for the Ukrainian armed forces, also short UAF. Whether this initial success can be carried on by the Ukrainian army uh, and will carry Ukraine to an ultimate victory will depend on how several key factors play out in the upcoming weeks or even months. The outcome of both the Battle of Donbass and the Russia-Ukraine war are very much still up in the air. Even though the Ukrainian resistance has frustrated uh, Russian forces in Donbass, the war is still far away from over. There has been a lot of deaths of Russian troops as Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky had said that over 23,000 Russian soldiers had been killed so far and over 1,000 tanks had been destroyed. Videos and footages have shown that several uh, several T-90 tanks, which was the lead tank in Ukraine of Russia, had been destroyed by the anti-tank missiles or perhaps even drones. The Russian military authorities likely expected to achieve a breakthrough in the northern shoulder of Ukraine's defenses in Donbass by this point, but they unfortunately failed. The reason is that the Ukrainian troops continue to exceed expectation on the ground and the Russian troops, which many say is inadequate or poor tactical pre-war ta- training. In practical terms, however, the UAF's successful defense results from the elaborate defenses Kiev had ordered in the years since 2014 when Russia had captured Crimea from Ukraine. The defenses in Donbass include concrete bunkers, mutually reinforcing positions, interlocking fields of fire, anti-tank mines and pre-sighted artillery targets on likely Russian avenues of approach. These defensive works along with other works have inflicted significant harm to the Russian forces who are already exhausted by now. The Russian troops have been primarily responsible for priv- and this is also the main reason why Russian troops are so far not able to penetrate deep into Ukraine. This successful defense has not been cost free but Russia has been pounding the entirety of the 300 mile front with relentless bombardment of heavy artillery, rocket fire and air attacks virtually non-stop. Putin's forces have emphasized attacking points south of Izium and Popsiana, pouring incredible and intense volumes of fire on the defenders in these crucial areas. Such attacks have thus far not caused the line to break, but it is crucial to understand that the men under this bombardment are human and are not immune to the effects of so many explosions. The impact of battle in Donbass. One of the most enduring consequences of America's two decade old war in Afghanistan and Iraq was the soldiers, reportedly numbering over 400,000. Over 400,000 troops suffered traumatic brain injuries from too much exposure to enemy's grenades, rockets, and artillery fire. The trench warfare of World War I, similar to the Battle of Donbass, which is ongoing, inflicted what was known as shell shock on the troops by relentless artillery bombardment on the enemy positions. On either side of the line, many of the soldiers became mentally incapable uh, to further operate in the war after too much exposure to these explosions. It is unaware or it is unsure that the UAF defenders or the Ukrainian armed defenders would succumb to the bombardment and break, but the pressure and the stresses are real and significant for both sides.
Russian troops too are subjected to Ukrainian artillery fire, but apparently in lower volumes and thus but seem to have less risk of breaking over shell shock effects as the Russian as the Ukrainian troops. But even if Russia does eventually grim down the UAF defenses and capture Donbass, they will have a very small force and incapable force of continuing further to take Odessa on the Black Sea or strike north to capture Kharkiv. So, to entertain any possibility of taking either city, Putin has to do one thing which he so far refused to do, mobilize some percentage of his own reserve forces. Russia for mass mobilization? As Russian expert Michael Kaufman has examined in detail, mobilizing the country for open war against Ukraine would be necessary to free up or create new fighting formations to continue the war in Ukraine. Doing so incurs considerable political costs for Putin. But without mobilization, Russia might not capture Donbass and definitely not be able to carry any further and would fail in its objectives to get an overland connection and would not be able to capture Odessa, the coastal city of Ukraine. Putin therefore is fast coming to a critical decision which he needs to make. First, hope he can capture Donbass without mobilization of troops and uh, then declare victory and end the war there. Second, B. Conduct national mobilization and add tens of thousands more combat troops to force the breakthrough in Donbass and potentially add yet another thousand troops to move into Odessa or Kharkiv. Ukrainian President Zelensky for his part has choices of his own to make. Ukraine gets large quantities of increasingly mass weapons uh, from the West including heavy artillery, tanks from Germany and long range air defense missiles. In times, it is possible, though far from certain, that the UAF could develop an offensive capacity with enough new gear and trained troops to switch from defense to offense and attempt to drive Russia from the Ukrainian territory. Ukraine has been successful thus far in blocking Russia's advances in Donbass and they will have a solid chance to continue that trend. But it is an open question about how long Ukraine can continue suffering casualties from the heavy firepower that they are getting from Russian artillery and air bombardment. War is ultimately a contest of wills. It remains to be seen who has the strongest wills, Ukraine or Russia. We also don't know who can most effectively endure the most casualties and who breaks first. Right now the war could tilt in either direction. But I, as a person, as a human being, I really hope that this war really ends because it is the civilians that is suffering the most. And according to Zelensky, more than 400 hospitals have been destroyed, which has, dis- which has uh, been a tremendous difficulty for patients to get proper medical treatment which would cost their lives. So, as everyone, I also hope that this war would quickly over and Ukraine would be rebuilt. So thank you friends for watching my channel, kind of like, subscribe and comment and for more such news uh, about uh, these wars and more about the military capabilities of each and every country all around the world, kindly subscribe this channel and we would meet you next time. Thank you.